Forge Cup Ministries is a Bible-based church. Our mission is to bring people to Jesus Christ. God's word is above all things. It's sharper than any double-aged sword, penetrating to your soul and your spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit and open your heart as you make God's word the standard for your life. Thomas TV, bringing people to Jesus Christ. Shall we love for Jesus? You may be seated. John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verse 29. Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them the bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. It is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven, and it gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go angry, or whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All those the Father gave me will come to me. And whoever comes to me will never be driven away. For I have come down from heaven not to do away, not to do my own will but to do the will of him who sent me. It, it is a long journey, but I will just pick, you know, a few points. You can read all of it. If you go to verse 49, you realize that you, it, sometimes because of this ignorance, Jesus reminded them to say, your ancestors ate manna, but later they died. But if you eat me, you never die. You are saying your forefathers hate manna. But they hate this manna and did what? Died. Let's go back to where I started in verse 29. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. The work of God is this, is to believe in the one he has sent. Who is that person? That is Jesus himself. If you say you are saving Jesus and you do not believe in him, the work that you are doing, it is the work of your mind, not the work of God. Because before now, and I want to take a you know, few a minutes on this one so that you get the point. Jesus means life. Jesus means restoration. Jesus means healing. Jesus means protection. Jesus means success. Jesus means what? Salvation. So everything that has to do with you and me was invested in this man, Jesus. So before Jesus came to this life, life was completely lost or destroyed. It's like, let me give you this example. 
Here is a vehicle. You put fuel, full tank, okay? You put fuel, full tank, without power, without battery. That vehicle is brand new, and it is full tank. Enter the vehicle now, start the engine without power. If that vehicle can, you know, start moving. What to make the fuel to start, you know, burning inside the engine, it is the power. So the fuel cannot use on its own. It is the power to use what? The fuel. That is our life. There's nothing that you can become in this life, even after this life. Yes, you can eat. You can count what? Money. You are known all over the world. You are a minister. You are a, a, a mayor, a counselor. You are a teacher. You are a doctor. You are a police officer. It doesn't mean that you have got life. No. You are living the life of, you know, where there is no direction. So he came to restore, I mean to give power to the, to the body which was no what? No life. I hope and trust you understand this. If you say you are working for God today, you must be a believer. Not just a mere confession. Jesus is inside you. And you know what you are talking about. Because Jesus answered them. He said the work of God is this. To believe in the one he has sent. So if you can worship God minus Jesus, who are you worshiping? Are you telling God that the Jesus who sent is meaningless, useless, and nothing? We can worship you even without Jesus? No. The wisdom of God is beyond human what? Wisdom. So anything from God is more important than what you think you know. So it came as what? As power to give life to the lifeless body. Because of what? The life that we are living before Jesus came was a life of no dilection. I hope Malay to understand the language. Listen to this. So they ask him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe and believe you? What will you do? If you hear the two conversations, you discover that even the other side, they were not insulting. They were claiming to be children of God. But what made them not to know that this one came from the same God that we are claiming to be our father? That is the question. They started now telling him to say, give us the sign. What are you going to do so that we believe that you, yes, you came from there. Give us the sign. What you are rejecting today is what you need or is what you want. It's what can make your life better. What you are saying, no, I can't believe this, is what can make your life what? Better. Are you there? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them the blood from heaven to eat. They were even quoting the Bible, challenging Jesus to say, look, you, you are claiming this. Don't you know that our ancestors ate manna from heaven? As it is written, that he gave them the bread from heaven. Listen to what Jesus said now. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. That is where my point is, 33. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Meaning, without Jesus, it's like we are lifeless. There's no life. Whether you believe or not, it is written. Without Jesus in your life, even if today you are eating, you are in that position, you are enjoying everything is good. Without Jesus, Jesus came to give life to the world. 
You are in the world. The world is not the soil. It is you, the people who occupy this world. So he came specifically to give you life. But mwebo aishileko, mwebo ako nkere, mulela nda tatuku shibe iwe. Baleri ya mana. In short, mulela nda kutati, leka tukwe yoko mila kwe ya pangike. Baleri le mana, mchiswe bebe. Finish if you are lelanda. Are you there, people of God? Verse, verse 34. Sir, they said, always give us this blood. Now take note of this point. Then Jesus declared, I am the blood of life. I am what? The blood of life. Whoever comes to me will never go angry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the blood of life. I gave you this simple example. The understanding concerning the will of God in your life will not come from your education. No. Or the area where you are staying. Or the people that you know. Who come from God himself. If it is not God who is leading your life, anything that you are claiming that you know, whether you are having a certificate, a master's in theology, without his own understanding in you, you will be preaching hellless, not salvation. Because if you look at these people, they were quoting the Bible, but rejecting the power of life. You are talking about manna. And the one who brought manna standing before you, you cannot recognize him. Why? Your relationship with God Almighty is questionable. Do you know that it is very easy to receive anything from God? But it is not easy to keep it or to maintain it. If you cannot maintain your relationship with him, even whatever you receive from him will disappear from your hands. The opportunity is here. Jesus is standing before you. But because you believe so much in what you learned from your forefathers, you are in the flesh. You cannot recognize what is in the spirit. He is telling you the things of, you know, of life. You, you are telling them, I mean, you are telling him history of what happened to your forefathers. Understanding about your life, about your creator, about your relationship with him comes from God. If it is possible for any human being to understand the things of God without God, rich people could have been, you know, there and claiming to know Jesus more than anyone. They can tell, you know, I was an achia kumuru, so apana enda po imikushiviri research injita, after na mweba, futi na buwele la mu, after na chila bomsha jeti. Rich people. Ngeba ya, ngeba chitashani. Educated people. Ngeba back for flanti, ngeba landa tuluku. Na chia mkuse nda degree kumulu. Jesus ha chinje bati yari fuma. But that is not the situation or the case. Life is not all about what you have. Or what you learn from your fellow human being. But the relationship that you keep from, I mean with God Almighty. You can receive money. Marriage, children, the way you are going to live with your creator who determine the fruit of your life. Are you there? Let me give you this example. You remember when Jesus, you know, was asked this question about which one is the, you know, the great commandment. There's this man, I like the way he responded to Jesus. I hope you understand this. You remember in that book of Mark 12. Let me take you there. I hope you are there. Because of time, let me just speak the way this man responded. Mark 12, verse 32. Yes. This is the man when Jesus, you know, explained. Because if you say, I love this one. If your love is not from God. It is not a true love. Because we don't know how to love. It is God who knows how to love. 
and we learn from him. And if we learn from him, God must be in you so that you know how to love. Listen to what this man said in 32. Well said, teacher. I hope you, you are there. Well said, teacher. The man replied, you are light in saying that God is one and there is no one but him. For this one, he agreed. And then he continues in verse 31, to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding. Take note of that one. And with all your strength. With all your understanding and with all your strength. Do you know that sometimes you may confess that you love Jesus, but within yourself, again, you ask, your character is saying, no, you don't love Jesus. You understand that one? With all your strength and with all your understanding. If you say with all your understanding, you are, you are telling the, the world or the people that your life is in Christ. The understanding you are talking about is Jesus himself in you. This, these are the people who are you know, challenging Jesus. Now my point is not about, about this one, but I want you to learn something from this man. The way he answered Jesus. You are a Christian. If you say you are a child of God, Jesus is your father. It is not your confession to approve what you are saying. It is the power of God in you. It is what? I gave you this example. Here is a car you put fuel without power. You cannot start the engine. You need battery. That fuel will do nothing, will be inside the tank. And the vehicle will be packed there. Not until when you bring the battery with power. Then you connect. It is now power to go and push fuel to say start learning. You get the point. So there's no way you can say you are a child of God without the power of life. Anything can consume you. What am I talking about? Jesus is the power of life. This is not the first time that I've shared with you this message. When I say Jesus is the power of life, in all areas of your life, you need Jesus. In business, you need Jesus. In marriage, you need Jesus. Whatever you are doing, you need what? Jesus. Tell your neighbor that Jesus is the power of life. Jesus is the power of your marriage. Jesus is the power of your business. Praise the Lord. So make no mistake, people of God. Without the power in you, you are like a vehicle without a battery. You cannot move. You are a human beings without legs. I hope and trust this message. I will continue by the grace of God. I want you to learn more concerning this. There is no way you can challenge Satan and rebuke Satan with your voice. No. Satan came from above. You know that? He was thrown down. So, advantage, advantage is a spirit being. So, for you to rebuke him or to command him, you need to be born again. How? By believing in this man, Jesus. When Jesus comes upon your life, you too, you are from above. Now you can command Satan. You can, you know, rebuke him. Because the one who is talking is not your voice, but Jesus himself in you. I hope you understand this. Devil is a spirit being. Demons are spirit, you know, beings. You cannot see them. So if you shout with your voice, you say, Satan, I rebuke you. Ah, ah. With your voice, they will feel nothing. You need to be born from above. When you are born from above, yes, even devil will be scared of you to say, no, not this one. But without that, you are a vehicle without power. Full tank, without what? Power. They can push you and push you. 
This time around, go and push your Corolla without a battery. Hmm? You need power to burn what? Fuel. And that power is Jesus. Thank you. God bless you.